what is George from Thomas the Tank Engine, extension tubes, and the Canon R5 with a couple lenses have in common? Well, today I'm going to look at all three of those together and try to achieve macro capabilities and see how it works. Also, check out which lens to put it on. I'm going to try the Canon RF 100 to 500, my big boy that I use for my wildlife photography, and the 24 to 105 f4. And we're going to see which one you should put your extension tubes on to achieve maximum magnification. And it's a little bit of a counterintuitive result. So stick around and we'll jump into that right now. All right, so what are extension tubes? Well, they're actually just a piece of plastic. It's, in this case, they have some pins on the inside there, and those pins allow the camera and the lens to continue to communicate so you can still have autofocus capability. But really all it is is a little bit of like I don't know, a shim is what we call it in woodworking, but just a little bit of um, uh, plastic to go in between the camera body and the lens to extend the distance between the two. And the effect of extending that distance is what we really care about, which is it reduces the minimum focus distance of a lens. And the lens comes shipped to you, you know, when you buy it, it has some minimum focus distance stated on it. In the case of the um, RF uh, 24 to 105, that minimum focus distance is about, I think it's 13.7 inches. So that's the minimum focus distance. But when you throw these tubes on it, it reduces that minimum focus distance considerably. And by focusing at a closer distance, we can achieve greater magnification with the same focal length. And that's the purpose of these, these little things. They're a very inexpensive way to try to get to something like a macro capability. They cut this in this case, these two tubes, which I've stacked together, cost 40 bucks. A macro lens, the RF 100 macro lens, I think it costs something like $1,200 or something like that. Is the quality going to match? I don't think so. You're going to have some fuzziness outside of the center of the image. You're pushing the lens to the absolute maximum because you're, you're achieving this kind of like different use that it wasn't necessarily intended to achieve. But 40 bucks is pretty cheap for the casual macro shooter. And that's what I'm really interested in today is how well these things work. And is it worth the 40 bucks? What results can you achieve? So I just said a moment ago that it minimizes the focus distance. And that's absolutely true. But really what these extension tubes are doing is they're shifting the entire bracket of focus a little bit closer to zero. So when your lens ships, you know, like I said, it could be 13.7 inches in minimum focus distance. But the maximum focus distance is infinity. In fact, that's how these lenses in terms of the magnification and the calibration, that's how they're set up is basically based on infinity. Well, that entire bracket shifted actually closer to zero. So yes, your minimum focus distance went to zero or close to it, a couple inches, but so did infinity. Infinity actually, in terms of the maximum focus distance, shifted a little bit closer to zero as well. So you can't, a lot closer in fact, so you can't focus on a portrait subject anymore when you have these extension tubes on. And that's an important thing to remember because you don't want to have these tubes on, pick up your camera from the macro subject, whether it's a flower or whatever, and go to try to shoot a portrait. You want to take these extension tubes off the second that you're done with any macro photography. Well, we just had a pee break for my little toddler. Okay, so here is the setup that we got today. I've got the R5 here set up with the lens on a tripod, dining room table, I built it, thumbs up for me. And then we've got George from Thomas Tank Engine over here, which is a steamroller. And the idea, what I'm gonna do basically is do the 24 to 105, then the 100 to 500. We'll look at maximum magnification for both of those. Then I'm gonna throw the extender or the extension tube on each of those and we'll see what the difference is. And that's the approach that I'm gonna to take today. So first up, we've got the 24 to 105 and um, Thomas Tank Engine, no extension tube. I'm going to bring the Thomas or the George here close, close, close to get minimum focus, which looks like it occurs right around there. Looks like a tiny bit further. I'm focusing on the eye for a Thomas tank engine. I keep saying Thomas, but he's really George. George, the steamroller engine. All right, move it back there. All right, looks like it's about there where I'm getting a focus lock. Okay, 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is turn this off, switch out the RF 24 to 105 for the 100 to 500, and we'll do the exact same experiment with that. Oh, I almost forgot, I didn't measure the, the distance. So let's look at the distance here. It should be, I think I said before 13, but um, let's see. Okay, it's actually closer, it's actually closer to 17. Um, I should check that. Yep, okay. I, <laughs> I actually had the numbers wrong. It's not 13.7, uh, it's 17.7. And that actually makes a lot more sense. Interesting, when you're, when you're measuring distance, you don't measure distance to the end of the lens, you measure it to the sensor. All the minimum focus distances are based on the sensor of the camera, which is basically, you know, the camera. So in this case, it's looking like it's 17.7. And you can see, you know, right here, 17.7, 17.5. So that's the minimum focus distance. Everything looks exactly like it should. That's what we're looking at. So let's switch it out and see what we got with the 100 to 500. Okay, so now we got the 100 to 500, which is huge. It's actually resting on the table. We still have George over here, and this is gonna be a further distance. I think it's supposed to be something like around 30. So we'll just check this out and see what we got here using the exact same method as before. Okay, so I've got a lock, but I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer to see how close we can get. It's a little bit of trial and error here just to see. Okay, so that was too close. Back up a little bit. Okay, I've got a lock there. So I'm just gonna say that that's about the closest it can get. Take a photo here. And that's the distance. So let's measure out the distance here. It's gonna be pretty far, I think. Okay, looks like 48 inches, which is honestly a little bit further than I thought it was gonna be. So it gives me a little bit of pause here because I think it's supposed to be about 38 inches. So let's see if I'm doing something wrong. Hey, it's Matt here back in the studio and I was getting kind of frustrated about this because I wasn't finding anything I was doing wrong, but I wasn't matching the Canon stats that said around 35 inches is minimum focus distance. So I went to the Canon website to try to understand this a bit more and looked up minimum focus distance. And what I found is that the number they report about 35 inches occurs at 100 millimeters, whereas the maximum magnification of the lens occurs at 500 millimeters and at 500 millimeters, the minimum focus distance is 1.2 meters, which is about 48 inches, which is what I'm finding out here. So it's a weird idiosyncrasy of the lens. It's not something that I'm doing wrong. It is worth noting that the minimum focus distance they report is not at the same focal length as the maximum magnification of the lens. Now let's try the two with the extension tube, and I think we're gonna get a difference. Well, it's actually fascinating. It really is super helpful having the eye autofocus. I have it set to animal setting right now, but it's so much better. It just finds the autofocus. You don't have to go through the, the focus ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the minimum focus distance on the, on the manual focus ring here and just bring this guy a little bit closer because it was too far away. So let's see. Looks like it actually is pretty good. Can go even closer. Let's bring it a little bit closer. This is how you know that I'm actually doing this for real because I don't know what the distances should be in advance. All right, so it's about there. I'm gonna go ahead and take that shot and we'll measure it. So 
we went from like 48 or whatever to 42. So not a huge difference. Um, and that's actually kind of what I expected. But there is an increase for sure in the macro capability of the lens. You can see that we are getting a closer shot and it is reasonably sharp. All right, so now final step, I'm gonna switch out this lens for the 24 to 105 and add the extension tubes. Okay, it's right there. A little bit closer, maybe? No. Okay. Okay, so that's the minimum focus distance. Look how close that is, right? I guess it's actually from here to here, but extremely close. So let's do a macro shot here. A little bit of numbers, a little bit of calculation here to see what we got. So remember what I said before is we have the base magnification and that's basically the maximum magnification that the lens can do before we did extension tubes. And we had 0.33x for the 100 to 500 right here. And we had 0.24x for the 24 to 105. So if you were just gonna go out and shoot macro photography or try to get something that's like pretty high resolution macro shot, then you would go with the 100 to 500 over the 24 to 105. Are there other lenses that are better, like the 35 millimeter RF, for example, which is 0.5x? Yes, there are, absolutely. And the macro lens that came out, the 100 millimeter macro RF, I think that's 2x, right? So four times better than the RF 35 millimeter at macro resolution. So. A lot of options out there, but if you were choosing between these two, you would choose the 100 to 500 for a macro shot. But when you add the extension tubes on, it switches. And that's because the extension tubes, their ability to add magnification is a function of the focal length of the lens. And smaller is better here. Because what you do to calculate the additional magnification that occurs is you divide the focal length of the extenders. In this case, I have two extenders that total 31 millimeters. And you divide that 31 millimeters by the focal length of the lens. So it's 31 millimeters divided by 500 in this case, which is 0 0.06. And then in this case with the 24 to 105, it's 31 millimeters divided by 105, which is a lot smaller. I think it's like 40. I can tell you, it, no, it's 30, <laughs> I should just do it. It's 0.295. So you're getting a 0.295X boost on the 24 to 105 with this extender versus a 0.6X boost on the 100 to 500. So what happens is this 100 to 500 goes from 0.33 to 0.39X, whereas this 24 to 105 goes from 0.24X uh, to point. Um, 5.4x. So this is a much better macro lens now than this one is. Now just for the sake of food for thought, if you had like the 35 millimeter, the RF 35 millimeter, which is marketed as a macro lens because it's 0.5x at base, using this same equipment, that 31 would be divided by 35. And so you would be adding 0.89x to a base magnification of 0.5 for a total of 1.4x. And that's the point here, is that when it comes to these extension tubes, it's better to put them on a lens that has a shorter focal length if you wanna maximize magnification. And that's the counterintuitive result, is even though this lens is better without the extenders at magnification, this lens is better, the 24 to 105 is better 
when you add those extenders. And I think that's useful probably because a lot of us who shoot Canon or who shoot in general, we have lenses that are in this range, whether it's a 24 to 70 or a 24 to 105. And so putting extension tubes on those lenses can actually be really useful. Now, if you have like a 50 mil, put them on that instead. If you have a 24 mil, put it on that and you're gonna get a lot bigger impact and a lot more bang for your buck. But so far after doing this analysis and taking these photos, man, like it's pretty impressive what you can achieve for a $40 extension tube kit. I mean, why, why spend the money if you're not serious about macro photography? And even if you are, but if you want something where it's like tack sharp over the entire 45 megapixel frame, then yeah, I think you need the macro lens. But for most of us that are just shooting like a flower or some bug or something like that, this setup can be really effective, particularly when you're just adding these extension tubes to, ones that you, to lenses you already have in your kit. And you're pairing that with a high resolution sensor so you can crop out anything that you don't want and um, anything that's excessively blurry for you. So I hope this was useful kind of as an example of, of what you can do with these things and, and what you should consider when deciding which lenses to put them on. I've seen videos and I personally was just assuming that I put the extension tubes on whatever my lens with the highest base magnification is. But when you think about it, you have to consider focal length and that's really the most important factor here in, term, in determining which lens you wanna put these extension tubes on. in. So let me know what you think and if you have any questions and looking forward to the next video. Take care, bye-bye.